and it was in that moment that I had to ask myself a question that, frankly, I never anticipated needing to ask in my life. Is this really how I die? Pants around my ankles, peeing in the wilderness, killed by aliens. Hello everyone, my name is Madame Macabre, and welcome back to those who've been here for a while and welcome to anyone who is new. Today I've got a bit of an interesting story time to share with you all involving my soiree deep, deep into the Sonoran Desert in the middle of the night. How I get myself in these situations? Well, life has many doors, Ed Boy. Anyway, to those of you who've been following me for a while, you probably realize I've gone through a bit of a quiet patch without a whole bunch of posting. Well, that we can thank in part to a huge cross-country move. I had been for the last two years living in Arizona, and just about a month ago, I moved all the way to the East Coast to North Carolina. Uh, we'll see if I stay here long term or if I just kind of like hop around until I eventually find some place that feels like home. Anyway, that is not what today's story is about. You see, today's story is about a month ago, right before I left Arizona. One of the last things I did there had to go out on a high note, I guess. So before I get too far ahead of myself, let me give you guys some context. So at the end of September, my friends over at Alien Atmosphere, I'll go ahead and link their stuff. They're great. They are a band that is actively starting to put new stuff out. I would highly recommend checking them out. Their music is great. Anyway, my friends in this band, Alien Atmosphere, were going out to shoot a music video. It was kind of last minute and their producer decided that they needed to have a girl in the video. And they're like, this is last minute. Um, would you be willing to help out? We need a girl. And I'm like, I happen to be a girl. I, I can help out. And uh, then it was revealed to me after the fact that not only did I get to play girl, I got to play cryptid. Well, all right then, I was born for this. Allow me to be the cryptid that I want to see out there in the desert. I was already down to go bungling around in the desert with friends recording stuff and taking pictures. I was already down. You're telling me I get to be a cryptid on top of this? Yes. So the whole process was a ton of fun. We got a big crew together, we piled into the cars, and we were going way out into the Sonoran Desert. Like we drove a hot minute out in the middle of nowhere. We needed this because we were gonna do some driving shots. They were gonna drive in their muscle cars and some of the footage was gonna be of the cars going along a road and it needed to be empty. Therefore, we drove and drove and drove out into the middle of nowhere so we could get those shots. So for about the first two hours, it was mainly just taking footage of the guys driving their cars up and down the road. So I was kind of on the sideline, which it was fun just to see the process of how this worked to begin with. So I was watching them for a while, getting all these different angles and stuff and helping out with something whenever I, I could be of assistance. And um, so this went on for about two hours. As we were nearing the end of it and they were like wrapping stuff up, I got kind of distracted messing around with my phone because for a brief glimmer of a moment, I got the tiniest bit of reception. So I was very excited because I'm very addicted to my phone like many of us are. My first mistake was showing the tiniest ounce of weakness because they pounced on it. So while I was distracted on my phone, not paying attention to my surroundings, mind you, by this point, the sun had already started to set and it was getting dark. I did not realize my friend Nick, the singer from the group, had snuck away from what he was doing in the road and had crept around the vehicle I was sitting in, snuck up behind, mind you, I had the window down because it was in the middle of the desert. It still hadn't gotten like real cold or any extreme temperatures yet, but I had the windows down. I was enjoying the nice breeze. He comes creeping up next to me. And next thing I know, he jumps out and grabs me through the window. Yeah, let's just say it gave me a spook. Good one, got me. It's become kind of a thing where we try and scare each other. I just, I guess both from demented families that grew up making a sport of traumatizing each other. So I guess that sort of set the tone for the mischief of the rest of the evening. Now, by this point, having finished the, the filming of the driving, we moved to a different area, and this is where I was gonna start getting more involved. We like pulled off on the side thing on the road. There was like this bunker thing that had signs. I don't know if we were supposed to be out there, but there was nobody, so it was free real estate. At that point, we decided we were gonna do some light writing and try and experiment with different stuff for some photography to mix in, because it was gonna be like a multimedia type of video. 
So we're getting things set up to do that. And of course, we look on the horizon and we see this really big, weird cloud. So the, the whole joke of the evening is, look, it's the nope cloud. It's the nope cloud. And it's just like, oh, that's great. And of course, it kept getting closer. That, yes, just what we needed. Anyway, we ended up doing a lot of photography and filming, experimenting with lights like these guys, playing with light. Now, mind you, we were in the deep, deep desert, like in the middle of the desert. So it was dark. At that point, after after the sun had fully set, it was pitch black. And of, of all the nights, this was not intentional, by the way, but we ended up the night of a new moon, meaning there was no moon in the sky. It was all black, just complete dark. Now, something cool that came from that was out in the desert like that, there's no light pollution. So looking up, it was, I have literally never seen that many stars in my entire life. I have not seen that much of the night sky. I was really thrilled because I got to actually see the Milky Way with my naked eye for the first time in my life. So that, that was a really cool experience, like getting to actually see the Milky Way because it's getting harder and harder to be able to do that as, you know, populations grow and there's more and more light and things, so. I was just thrilled to get a chance to do that in my lifetime. Anyway, it's dark, it's pitch dark, so we're getting some really cool experimental stuff with these lights because there's no other light to, to mess with the shot. So you have complete and total control on the coloration and the lighting. Um, we ended up doing some light painting and I got to help out <laughs> this part by like climbing in one of the cars. The boys were gonna stand in front of the car and then we were gonna have different lights set up and then we wanted to get like a flash of the headlights for long exposure. So I like climbed in the car and like tucked down out of sight and would like try and hit the, the headlights at the right time. And then their producer wanted to do light, ri uh, light writing or light painting behind the car. So. <laughs> You see their producer holding one of these light wands, jumping and running and twirling and woo, like all around, like go, 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 because there was a certain amount of time to, to get the shot with a long exposure. It was chaos. It was just pure chaos incarnate. It was really something to be a part of, but um, ended up looking really cool. And I, interestingly enough, unintentionally, because he was not trying to write any particular word. This was like one of the first times we were doing it, but the producer's running around and jumping and leaping and just like swirling all over the place. And we took a, a preview of, photo, of the photo and it looked like he had written in cursive the word believe. So they're out there. Then finally, it was my time to shine to be a cryptid. So I'm in a long flowing dress. I'm, well, you can see from my complexion, I'm ghostly pale, come by it naturally. Had my hair down, my hair's quite long, so I had my long hair, ghostly complexion, and a long flowing dress. And they were gonna have me stand in the middle of the road facing ominously at the car when they were gonna do their shots. Well, you know how I mentioned we were literally out in the middle of nowhere? Most of the night, we didn't really see any other people, but I'm sorry to whoever the Jeep driving through that area was, they got a bit of a spook. Of course, while I'm standing by the road, pale, long flowing hair and a dress, in the middle, in the middle of the desert, and this poor Jeep comes driving by. I see it's coming, so I step out of the road, but I'm standing close to the shoulder of the road, staring at the car, so sorry to the Jeep, because what they saw was a pale girl with long hair and a flowy dress standing in the middle of the desert, miles from civilization, just standing there, not moving, not trying to wave them down, just staring, probably what seemed ominously, because I didn't have my glasses on, so I was probably like making a weird face or something, staring at them as they went by. So might be a new urban legend going around. Maybe, maybe a story to tell out of that. Sorry if I gave you a spook. But I'm not really that sorry because I finally got to live my dream of becoming a cryptid. I'm out there. You never know when you're gonna run into me. Now, once we got the footage of me done, we were kind of nearing the end. We just needed a couple more things tweaked here and there. So I was just kind of standing aside while they were messing with the light and the equipment and like packing it up and getting ready to go. And at this point, I am looking up, just like, I'm just slack jaw staring at the sky because I'm mesmerized by being able to see the Milky Way. At this point, I saw something kind of weird. 
So those of you who have seen a meteor or like a, a shooting star, the way they like diagonally zip down, so they're like really fast and they, they shoot diagonally down. The, I thought it was a shooting star, but things got a little bit funky because again, in the middle of the deep dark, we're in the Sonoran Desert, I'm looking up at the stars and all of a sudden there's an extremely bright, what looks like a shooting star, but it's moving in reverse. It came out of nowhere and it it's like shooting up and shrinking like it's going back up into the sky. But what's funky is it shoots like this and then it does a hard right turn and shoots straight up into the sky and gone. Like, boom. Like the speed increased and everything. It was, it was interesting. And like, mind you, I didn't say anything because I'm like gears turning, processing. But that's when the producer starts freaking out. Did anyone say that? Did anyone else see that? And I'm like, you mean the, the shooting star moving in reverse that took a hard right turn and shot up into the sky? Yes. And he's like freaking out. And of course, we were the only ones who saw it. <laughs> like everybody else was packing things up and doing the wrong, doing other stuff, not looking at the sky. But that that was interesting. So I don't know what that was. Neither of us know what that was. But uh, it, it was interesting to see in the middle of the desert. And that was kind of the point in the night where I'm like, okay. Okay, we, we've, we've, we've been out here for a while. However, by this point, we had been out in the desert like four and a half, five hours at this point. And um, four and a half, five hours, and I had drinking a big giant like vitamin water thing because it was Arizona, it was hot. And I reached a point where I was having to use the bathroom. I had to pee really, really bad. And I had held it the entire day, but I didn't realize we were going to be out there for four plus hours. And so I'm like, uh oh, I, I really, really have to go. And I'm sorry, but I am not above going out and peeing in a bush. If I have to go, I have to go. So at that point, after like contemplating, because mind you, it would have taken us 45 to 50 minutes to get back to civilization. And I could not hold it that long. I could not. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna have to do this. I'm gonna have to do this. So I uh, went up a trail, like out around, out of sight of the guys. And um, so I, I do my business, but the whole time I have like a weird feeling. You know the feeling you get in your gut when like something's watching you? And I know it wasn't one of the guys, they were down out of sight. So I got the feeling in my gut, something was watching me and like you get kind of the prickly feeling and you get uneasy and I kept like, you know, like looking over my shoulder. I'm like, this feels weird, especially after seeing weird lights in the sky. We're in the middle of nowhere. It's a moonless night. This is great. This is just great, you know, and we're in other cryptid territory too. Wonderful. So I'm out there doing my business. And as soon as I finish up, I start to hear rustling and footsteps. And at this point, I'm having to question, am I really going to die with my pants around my ankles because an alien came to get me in the middle of the desert? Spoiler, it did not. But it was very scary. And when I say <laughs> that I have not power walked so quickly out of an area in my entire life, I didn't run, I power walked because in case it was some kind of critter, I didn't want it to take chase. But at the same time, I don't know what it would have been. But um, because at first I thought maybe it was like a javelina or something like rustling in the bushes, but I heard footsteps. Javelinas have hoofies. They don't have boots. Boots in dirt and gravel make a very distinct sound like footsteps but there was no one accounted for. Everyone was out where they were supposed to be. We were in the middle of the desert, miles from civilization. There was no light. So who was out there? You know what, scratch that. I'm actually glad I don't know the answer to that. I'm, I'm glad I don't know. We hurried back to the car, because at that point I, I power walked back and I was like, there's something out there walking this way. We gotta go, we, we gotta go. So we loaded up into the cars and we went. Listen, I've watched plenty enough horror movies to know that abundance of curiosity gets you killed. I guess I'm just not allowed to live a normal, uneventful life. There's always gotta be something. Wall Martians, aliens in the desert, cryptids, what's next? 
Anyway, so that sort of wrapped up the events for the night. We we just went back into town. It was late. It was like wee hours, and the only place that was open was a pizza place. So we got some pizza and just hung out, and then eventually had to had to go. But that that was sort of the that was the end of the evening. It was very very. <laughs> interesting experience i'm glad i went it was a lot of fun there was some interesting cryptid cloud lights in the sky stuff that i don't really understand but it was an experience and i i'm glad i got to do it especially you know spending time with your friends and stuff but for those of you who are curious about the music video itself where i'm gonna make a little surprise cameo it is going to be releasing, I believe, sometime in December. If you want the exact details, I would recommend going over and checking out Alien Atmosphere on their various social media platforms. I'll go ahead and link them down below because when they release it, you'll have to keep an eye out because there's going to be a cameo of yours truly in there. I am the Witch of the Woods. Or the, the desert, the, the, the cactus forest. I... I don't know. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for stopping by for today's story time. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm sure there will be plenty, plenty more stories now that I am living in Appalachia. Oh god, I've already started hearing some spooky things from the locals. Oh my god, like, the, the west coast and the forests out there, they had their spooky yukis, but... The Appalachians are so much older, and the things out there, they don't play around. <laughs> so, um, that, that's good. That's an experience. So I'm sure there will be plenty, plenty more things to share with you in, in the future. But, uh, that is all for today. I will catch you all next time with either more scary stories or maybe a new song. But until then, remember everyone, stay creepy.